Did you know that the Google Pixel line of devices is made in Bac Ninh, Vietnam, about 50 kilometers from where I'm standing right now? Crazy that they don't sell these here. It doesn't matter because I'm not going to get a Pixel 10 and the specs of the Google Pixel Tensor SoC, Tensor Gen 5, have leaked online. If you are looking for a performance improvement, you're going to be disappointed. Full specs of this have leaked on Android Authority. Tensor G5 is essentially using some odd design choices. Tensor G3 used one ARM Cortex-X3. Tensor G4 used one ARM Cortex-X4. And Tensor G5 is going to use the same big core. The middle cluster, there was three ARM Cortex A720s in Tensor G3. In the Tensor G5, we're gonna have five ARM Cortex A725s. The little cluster is getting shrunken. So it's going to go from four ARM Cortex A520s in Tensor G4 to two ARM Cortex A520. So they're making the smaller cores smaller and they're adding more mid-performance cores. They're also gonna be adding a new GPU to this. And the new GPU is a GPU that's used on some MediaTek chipsets. And we're not going to see a huge improvement in AI performance, which is like kind of strange on Tensor G5. We're looking at nine tops versus 6.5 tops on Tensor G3 and Tensor G4. So we're not going to have much in the way of performance for AI. And even though this is going to be built on TSMC's three nanometer node, we see that the overall design of this SOC, it's not using the most up-to-date des designs for the cores on the SOC. Does any of this really matter though, right? Because the Pixel Lime devices since launch have always had, or I should say since uh, Tensor has launched, have had pretty good day-to-day -day performance and people like myself that aren't hardcore gamers have been relatively satisfied. And the answer is yes. The performance of the device does matter and I only felt like it mattered this past summer coming to Vietnam. The reality of it is even if you aren't someone that is using these for hardcore gaming or hardcore video editing, in a climate like Vietnam, where the day-to-day -day average temperature for six months out of the year is 35 to 36 degrees Celsius, means that you need to have more thermal headroom for your device. There's no way to get around that. And the fact that we can have a bigger, more powerful SOC running at a lower speed or under a lower load versus a lower powered SOC running at a higher load is where the thermals of the device just become important. Because while I haven't had the device overheat and shut off on me, there have been quite a few times when I've used my Pixel 8 Pro outside when it's super hot here during summer. And for just day-to-day -day stuff, it gets really hot, like hot enough that we know that the device is thermal throttling. The device becomes kind of sluggish to use on occasion. If I was still living in America where my day-to-day -day average temps weren't 35 degrees Celsius for six months out of the year, I would totally consider sticking with a Pixel device. Here in Vietnam, we don't use phone calls and text messages for a lot of stuff. Almost all of our communication is done through apps. So a lot of the awesome features that Google brings to people in markets where Pixel is sold aren't available, available to people outside of those markets. And even if I was in one of those markets like Singapore or something else, from my understanding of the way things are in Singapore and Japan, part of my Telegram group that we have for this channel, it seems like most people outside of America are communicating through apps. So all of the awesome AI hold for me and all of the uh, call screening and spam detection and the menu tree stuff that Google has for American or UK centric customers, we just don't use here in Asia. So a lot of the benefit to the AI and a lot of the conveniences that make me want to continue using a Google Pixel device are just no longer part of my life now that I've moved back here to Vietnam. And because I can't fully utilize those features, I don't have a reason now to pay flagship money for a non-flagship device. It's just that simple. If I'm paying a premium price for a device, I want it to be premium in 
always. And because I'm not getting any of the added pixel benefit, the fact that it still is a non-premium device on the SOC side of things kind of cancel each other out for me. And while the cameras on this device have been phenomenal, because everyone's cameras have been getting better and computational photography for everyone has been getting better, the difference between the camera performance on my Pixel 8 Pro and let's say the OnePlus 13 that's about to drop or a Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, those have been shrinking. And the fact that I can't utilize a lot of the other AI features that Google talks about really means that this device is just no longer the right fit for me, which is kind of a bummer because I do love stuff like Top Shot and all of the camera AI features that this device has. But also we've seen that Google is intentionally holding back features that are simply software related because I don't have the newest device. And there's no reason that I shouldn't have all of the new camera features that the Pixel 9 Pro has in my Pixel 8 Pro because the performance between the two devices is virtually the same. I have just as much RAM. There's really no reason. So seeing Google kind of take this approach where they are holding back features that are purely software based and the fact that I can't take advantage of a lot of the AI stuff and the fact that here in Vietnam, we don't use calling or text messaging really just means that the incentive for me to stay with this brand has diminished to almost nothing because my user experience on a Samsung device honestly would not be drastically different than it is on this device. And so my next device will likely be a OnePlus 13.